Hello once again everyone, and welcome to the start of a new series. So, my Fiore class has recently been going over the Armored Lance, or Spear, and as such I thought this would be a good time to kind of go over it, because it's very interesting, and since I'm in my armor a lot on Wednesdays anyway, might as well showcase it while I'm in all my stuff. Obviously I have an open face helmet so I may clearly speak, but it still gets the idea across. And joining me is Jake, a resident Italian. So, kind of the interesting thing about Fiore's Spear is going to be his pulse stun, right? It's not just here the entire time. Instead, he takes us through a variety of different positions, as well as the way that our opponent is going to attack against us. Now, Jake is currently not in armor. It should be noted that the opponents that Fiore is facing are in varying levels of armor against him. Um, and there might even be some tinfoil hat theories on that, but we will digress at the moment. For now, though, we're kind of assuming Jake is at least in some armor with his face as open as mine. Now, what's interesting is the very first thing that we go over is the position Jake takes. He is thrusting from his right side with his left hand in front, and we also even see that the feet are turned back in a Volta style. Now, the reason for this, we don't necessarily know. And when it comes to later Fiore fighting against other knights, i.e. for the counter actions, sometimes his position would have had to have been very different for him to get there. Now, what I am calling this is the affectionately named Mook Thrust, right? This is Jake basically standing in the line, using his standard attack so he just drives down while keeping his right foot in front. He can use that bolt to push more force into it. He has a lot of great options, but what he's not gonna do is he's not gonna pass forward with this attack, as that takes all of his pressure kind of away or puts it too much into one area. Now, regardless of which side you're going off of, he will pretty much always be attacking the same way. This could, of course, be transferred over to whatever position he starts from, but this does make everything flow a little better. Now, our first position is going to be to support the Pharaoh, wherein I am standing left foot forward, my, I am thumb to thumb, and my spear point is within my own leg. I'm going to advance my back foot off the line as I bring my hand down to percussively strike in against his spear. Now, some people interpret this in a different way. I will go over that once we show what I'm going to go for. So as he thrusts in, I'm going to step forward. As I bring my hand down to my hip, this creates a nice wedge between us, gets him out of the way. I'm then going to first point by bringing my hand more to my chest, and then I will step in to deliver the thrust against him. So here is that again. I am low in Tupa, he comes in, out to create that wedge, point, go. I could also put this point into his armpit, or what have you, as I go. Now, some people like to interpret this in a slightly different way. Some people like to go the other way. I don't think there's anything necessarily wrong with that. That would look like this, where I'm using the back as I step out, and then I will get more target into his underarm or over his arm. And that is nice. However, I don't necessarily like doing that very much. The reason I don't like doing it is one, this is just stronger. And two, to make that cover is a lot like I'm using the false edge. There's a relatively small window that his point could still get through quite easily, unless I get a perfect parry, versus if I am stepping into it and making this kind of true cross as we do normally, odds are I'm safe. Even if he does get on the target, he's not gonna be very strong against it. So one more time on that, then I'll switch perspectives on Tuta, he thrusts, wedge out against it, point, go. Now we'll switch sides. So first a couple slow ones. I am here in Tuta, he thrusts in, Create that wedge as I step forward into it, kind of stepping obliquely. Point, cover that distance. If he was using a shorter spear, sometimes you can even get this hit a lot faster, but I am not looking for an instantaneous hit. Right, I'm a lot tighter in against him, thus I can get a quicker hit. Now, I like to really hold off of my right step. What I mean by that is as he does his thrust, I like to stand here for a moment, see if he reacts, because if he tries to pull up or pull back or anything along those lines, I haven't put my foot into it, and this is a shot that I can you know, go into because of my armor, versus if I always am kind of immediately stepping forward, now we're in a position where his counter is available, my counter is you know, available, etc. It takes us to Sveta, when I would prefer for us to be playing more Larga. But either way, that is going to be Tutta Porta di Ferro, our now first crossing. Let's switch sides. So, for our second crossing, our second guard. This is where we're going to move into uh, Mezzana Porto di Ferro. Now, these are very annoyingly named because, of course, this looks like 
your first Porte de Ferro Mezzana that you do with the sword versus, sorry, your first Porte de Ferro versus this would be Porte de Ferro Mezzana. Compared to Tuta, it's relatively straightforward because it is not low, um, but that naming convention is a little annoying. I'll kind of be ranting about that as we go on, but this is going to work exactly the same as the sword. I'm just going to bring everything hinging around my left hand in against it so that I get my counter thrust. Now I want to make sure, if you just hold your spear presented toward me, just out all the way. What I don't want to have is lateral smack. While yes, that is powerful, that's very easy for him to deal with. Instead, I want to make sure that as I'm doing this, it's going in and down, just like the sword would, to create a strong wedge. While that is still not necessarily the most difficult thing in the world to deal with, it gives me a much better chance of securing that line as opposed to just swatting. Plus, it also does the added benefit. It advances my right foot forward, which gets me kind of on the center line in relation to him, and I am a lot stronger because of it. Otherwise, everything's exactly the same. So, he's up in move thrust. I am in the Porte de Mazzana. He starts to thrust at me. I advance myself forward to get my guard. Now here, you may be tempted to try and pass forward. Like, I can't reach Jake currently. So it would make sense, in theory, for me to step forward with my thrust. I implore you not to do so. Reason being is that if I do that, and he manages to parry, I am now very, very weak in relation to him. He's parrying on his outside, I'm parrying across my body. This is gonna be really hard for me to fight him, and if he does step forward with his back foot to get into close, I'm now in a really, really bad spot, comparatively. So instead, once I, my right side is forward, I'm going to keep it forward as I move in. You can think of this very similar to when we get the cross in the middle, and I choose to step out and cut onto his arms before thrusting into his chest. So, he goes to do a thrust, create my wedge, now I'm gonna stay where I am, point, and just drive in again. This should also give you opportunity to maybe go into the armpit or other such places, but this makes me a lot safer. If he does manage to parry and tries to step up against me, I am now just as equal as him and can bring my own left leg into it if I so choose. He must come into my strong side. We'll show that one more time from this side, then we'll switch sides. Now we'll switch. Now it should be noted, you can take a bigger step than I am taking currently. I'm getting a really good wedge, and I'm in armor, so I feel a lot safer. If you're doing this without armor, I do recommend kind of springing away a bit more, but not required. We'll do that one more time. It's all about maintaining that anchor point with your left hand in both of these. It's stuck to my hip, which means that I am always presenting my strongest side forward, regardless of how I get there. Either way, let's switch side again. Now we come to the final of Fiori's right-sided guards. Now this last one is kind of the infamous one. The one that the second everyone gets their arm harness on, they're like, can I do it, right? And if they can't, then all, oh, right? This is the infamous Finestra. Now, so important things to note about Finestra. My hands are going to be crossing for this. It behaves exactly the same as the sword does. And in fact, kind of the best way of thinking of this is you're just using it like a sword. I want to talk a little bit about why you might be there, first off. Because with a sword, the benefits are obvious. Being crossed up means that I can apply a lot of force in against him, just the same as someone would do that from low with a sword, what have you, right? With a spear, while that benefit is obvious, why the hell would you even be there? Like, when would I ever choose to, ah, I'm fighting Jake, let me cross up, but that's exactly it. You may have had to just parry a strike. Now, this is just kind of more of a tinfoil hat theory, but let's say I was already right before, and Jake could be using some other weapon, it could be a sword, it could be a spear, you never know, I mean, I'm bare face right now, if he hits me with that hack, it's gonna suck. But, maybe he chooses to step in with a cut against me, right? Performing this parry by kind of stepping back into more of a finesse-like motion is very strong. It gives me a great cover, whereas otherwise, to parry that cut, I'd have to do something like this. That's really not very strong. It gives him a lot of opportunities. And also, odds are, if there's an axe blade, that's still going to hit me. If I cross and pass back on the other hand with the fornare, that makes me a lot stronger the same way I would do it with the sword. Now, you may notice my hand's relatively low, because I know where he's going. Jake is currently aiming for my face. If he had Max, he wouldn't have to care about that as much. He could aim more from the top of my head. Now, I don't necessarily know if this is true. 
but I could totally see you having to do this because I have had to do this. And, you know, things happen. But just for sake of argument, that is a good idea to why you might go into this position. Besides that, though, it has plenty of obvious strengths. So, I am now folded back. My arms are crossed and about the level of my head, if available. Again, this depends upon your harness. You're going to just kind of have to see how it is. I recommend you keep about your normal long sword grips work beneath your left hand. You do not want to be too choked up because you might lose control of your spear. Neither do you want to be in the middle because then you'll catch your abdomen as you go over. Though if you're doing a different version of this, that's not a problem. We'll get to that again later. But I'm just going to fold up and everything's going to behave exactly the same. As he thrusts in, I'm going to push my point forward, moving him off the line, and this will usually turn into just a straight up exchange of points. Now, a lot of people have difficulty with this. So I'm gonna go into hyper detail about how to achieve that thrust without getting your own spear in the dick. So, Jake, why don't you mimic me from the side with the longer spear while I am facing the camera? So, Jake will thrust behind me, just so it's easy, right? So the idea here is, what I do is once I'm crossed up, I'm going to start driving with my right hand. My right hand moves me forward to the point that I find central. Now at this point, what I like to do is I'm gonna basically step away from my right hand, and I'm gonna pull my left hand out until I support that wedge on both sides. Against the air, your tip is going to feel very weak. Against a the person, they are applying the opposite force back against you. So it really gives you credence to hold your guard where it is. Here's that again. So I push with my right hand, then I step. This means that my point will go right up his face, the same way with the sword, and I won't hit myself with my own guard. So let's show that again. Nice and safe, and it always kind of goes straight up to the face. Now, you may find that their tip is still relatively close to you. If that happens, when you do the turnout, i.e. pulling with your left hand and stepping with your right, you can step further and let your hands sort of widen. What I mean by that is that I'll go this way. When I do my thrust, when I do that turnout, I can slightly move up a bit on my half, and that'll give me just a little bit more reach. And not reach, sorry. Um, angle is what I'm looking for. So one more time on this side, then I'll do the other side. I'm really making myself suffer today, aren't I? <laughs> no fear. Let's straight sides. Sometimes you may find that the tip wobbles there. That's okay. Once you're into here, just push that right foot, uh, sorry, right foot and right hand forward, and you will get again a true cross. And from here, if I am super deep on him, I can put it a lot of different places with that little extra step forward. Now, before we finish with the right side guards, I do want to talk about another thing that Finestra can do. So, Fiora mentions in the sword section that Finestra can exchange points, beat, or break. Now, the idea of breaking is something that you're actually doing the spear quite a bit. Usually it's not uh, exemplified by the plays though. So if you just hold your spear out, uh, there we go, perfect. So breaking in this case would be me achieving that sort of overpressure. Again, I'm not whacking the spear. I'm creating an overbind, which because of the nature of these, I'm going in, will percussively expulse his away, right? You can create this same break from Finestra quite easily, and also, if you find yourself more in the middle, this can give you a fun option. So, how does this work? Let's say I'm in a bit more of a tight Finestra. What I'm going to do is, rather than trying to thrust, because I'll get stuck on myself, instead what I will do is I will open by pulling that back side forward. This starts covering me. The second thing I will do is then push as I move essentially through Pulse of the Dawn. This will allow me to break his incoming thrust. I keep my hands right in front of my face, so if he's gonna hit me, he's gonna run both gauntlets, the initial parry, and the demi in between my hands, and then I'll just break whatever's left. So, let's see how that looks slow first. Uh, just go ahead and hold it out for the first one so that I can show the motion. So, I'm a little more choked up on my spear. I open, strike, breaking him, and then I can choose to place the point in however I see fit. Now we'll do it uh, one more time slow, and then we'll do the thrust. So, 
open, strike, thrust. Now we'll have him thrusting at me. Now note, I may not got the timing on this one because it's not easy. But the idea here is I, once I start moving, I just got to kind of keep my tempo going. I even got a little bit more out of that than I wanted to. And it's just a fun mechanic. Now for sake of, this time we'll, we'll purposely have you hit a different target. I'm going to have Jake thrust a little bit lower, more like my armpit. If that happens, the tail should still cover. So we'll thrust slower so that we were sure it happens. As you see, sure it got stuck in my elbow, but that elbow wasn't me. It can cover me, and if this happens, Oh, hey, I have other options from here. But the basic idea is that now it covers you exactly the same as a normal Fendenti does, that turning just now into a break. And we'll later see this also done with the axe, because finesse with an axe is, that's, that stuff's terrifying. But either way, those are going to be our guards from the right side. Next week, or possibly week after, we'll have to see how the schedule goes, I will be going over the guards from the left side, as well as then the week after, we'll talk about the follow-up. Because they're kind of just one universal follow-up, but it does have some variations I wish to go over. So, thank you very, very much, Jake. And thank you all very much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed, and I will, we will go over some other techniques another time.